Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian Limano, I'm co-founder at Legacy Root, and in this video I'd like to share a bit about just how valuable soil is, and how we intend to use pioneer plant species together with solid water, our superabsorbent polymer granules, in order to efficiently restore eroded lands to a fertile state. So jumping in, let's start with the question, what's the value of soil really? But instead of me talking your ear off about it, let's take a look at it from the somewhat historically accurate view of Vikings, featuring King Egbert and Lagatha. Hida given me very hun. Mir hiker. Mir fiker hen gelf me refer to men dir griper. Ne denke de oswer. Those of you who watched the Viking series may remember Lagathar grasping a handful of earth and holding it up in reverence. The gesture is repeated throughout the series, as finding new lands for his people to farm was Ragnar Lothbrok's main motivation to sail the uncharted North Sea, aside from defying the gods, of course. But although much of the series is fiction, if we look at the geography of Norway, their risk-taking does make sense. Farmland in Norway has long been scarce, and it remains so to this date. Only 2.2% of its land is arable. Compare that to the roughly 25% of the United Kingdom and you get a decent idea of why the Norwegian Viking clans were so driven to raid the Saxons. Of course, throughout history, it wasn't just hungry Vikings who paid the blood price for arable land. In fact, one of the few things we know about our ancestors is that they've been fighting over lands long before farming was even invented. And with our steadily growing population, the need for arable land is only going to go up, not down. Unfortunately for us though, the world is currently losing about half the size of England in fertile soil every year according to the UN, to a phenomenon known as desertification. But what if, instead of conquering, raiding or otherwise competing for existing lands like our ancestors did, we created new fertile lands for us and our future generations? I should point out here that nature already has her own way of restoring lands, through ecological succession. After the soil has been damaged by erosion, the plants that lived there before are unable to grow back. However, where most plants can survive, there are pioneer plant species that actually thrive in eroded soil. These colonizers are able to trade the comfort of nutrient-rich and moist-keeping earth for uncontested access to sunlight. And although they are not the fastest growing plants, they do cultivate the earth and gradually attract more life to settle there. The only downside, however, is that ecological succession takes time, often decades and sometimes millennia. But what if I told you we have the technology to significantly increase the growth and survival rates of these pioneer plant species, as well as improve their drought resistance over a period of 5 to 10 years, and that by using this technology we can regenerate soil by helping the plants at the foundational level of an ecosystem grow and survive, while they colonize the lands that have been damaged. Introducing solid water. These water-absorbing granules are a potassium, nitrogen, hydrogen polyacrylate in the category of superabsorbent polymers, also known as SAP or SAPs. They can absorb up to 150 times their own weight in water and when applied to the soil trap rainwater that would otherwise evaporate or sink down into the groundwater level. This allows pioneer plant species with their usually superficial root structures to grow into the solid water granules and start extracting water as they need it. The benefits for the plants are, among other things, up to 15% increased growth rate, better germination success rates, as well as up to 300% longer drought resistance. Additionally, solid water can last up to 10 years in the soil during which time it is broken down into its original potassium, nitrogen and hydrogen compounds, or used by bacteria in the soil as a food source. Due to the extensive research towards its effect on the environment, superabsorbers now fall within the EU's legislative framework and already see extensive usage in agriculture. As legacy root, we also don't take credit for this particular polymer, as that goes out to Ibrahim Al Alim, the father of our co-founder Adnan, who invented and pioneered superabsorbents since the early 90s up until his death in 2017. What does make us unique, however, is our approach. By focusing on pioneer plant species with their mostly superficial root structures, we don't need to dig into the earth to apply our material. This dramatically decreases the labor involved with application. Eventually, our vision is to airdrop solid water directly onto the affected areas. 
After all, the material is very light and expands only when in contact with water, making it very suitable for aerial transport and delivery as long as we can keep it dry. A standard C-130 cargo plane could cover any terrain with up to 95 hectares of solid water in a single flight. This roughly translates to 177 football fields. It would be able to do so at a cost of around 200,000 euros, which includes the cost of the material, the C-130's cost per flight hour, and leaving some wiggle room for the loading and especially offloading process. However, promising as though all this might sound, we still have to test our core assumptions. This is why we are currently looking for a pilot project in North Brabant, a region in the Netherlands that despite its plentiful rainfall, is still dealing with sandy soils sensitive to land erosion. Fun fact, North Brabant has the only desert in the Netherlands, now known as the Loonse and Drunense Duinen. It was created during a time of overpopulation and overlogging during the late medieval period, and is now a national park as well as the largest drifting sand area in Europe. The questions we need to answer are Will applying solid water to the soil help pioneer plants survive? And to what extent does growing more pioneer plants make soil recover faster? Our method is pretty straightforward. We'll be using 100 kg of solid water, as well as pioneer plant seeds over 5,000 square meters of soil, roughly one football field. If by the end of the summer the area treated with solid water has a significantly bigger and healthier plant population than the control area, we can call the experiment successful. So if you would like to green deserts together with us, your help will be much appreciated. We're currently looking for drone photographers, ecologists, and people who can help us get through a funding round or two in order to be able to pay everyone. If you are that someone, or you represent an institution that can help us, or you have a completely different way of helping us out, please contact us, contact me, and we'll see what we can do. For now, my name is Sebastian Lemano. Thank you so much for your attention so far. And hopefully we may speak soon.